be no death ready when Jesus comes. There'll be no death ready when Jesus comes. There'll be no death ready. I greet you all in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Um, I pray that the Lord will lead us in this hour of worship and also of sharing from his word. Uh, I don't feel a bit well today, this morning, but the Lord will carry us through the moment. I'd like us for our, for our worship this uh, morning, we take a look into the book of Mark chapter 2. Mark chapter 2, we are going to read from verse 1. Mark chapter 2, Mark chapter 2 from verse 1. The Bible reads as follows, And again he entered Capernaum after some days, and it was heard that he was in the house. Immediately many gathered together so that there was no longer room to receive them, not even near the door, and he preached the word to them. Then they came to him bringing a paralytic who was carried by four men. When they could not come near him because of the crowd, they uncovered the roof where he was. So when they had broken through, they let down the bed on which the paralytic was lying. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven you. And some of the scribes were sitting there and reasoning in their hearts, Why does this man speak blasphemously like this? Who can forgive sin but God alone? But immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they reasoned thus within themselves, he said, why do you reason about these things in your heart? Which is easier to say to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven, or to say, arise, take your bed. But that you might know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. He said to the paralytic, I say unto you, Arise, take your bed, and go to your house. Immediately, he rose up, took his bed, and went out in the presence of all of them, so that they were all amazed, glorifying God, saying, We have never seen such anything like this before. Let us pray. Our Lord and our Father in heaven, as we discuss from your word, we pray that you bless us and you lead us. In Jesus we pray it. Amen. We are reading from, a, from, the, from one of the Gospels, one of the Synoptic Gospels. It is interesting that when you look into the book of Mark, the book of Mark is written, as we know, by a man called John Mark. And it has been debated as to the occasion of the writing of the book. The occasion of the writing of the book, one writer, Josephus, a church historian, says that when Mark was in the city of Rome, where the book of Mark was probably written, it was written for a church that was discouraged. There was fire that arose in Rome, and the emperor at that time suggested that the fire was begun by Christians. And Christians were killed in the presence of the people. Josephus says when light failed Rome, Christians will be set alight to provide light for Rome, and others will be killed and be thrown in the fire. So Mark is writing an agent gospel that is agent at that particular time because of the persecuted church. If we are to summarize the book of Mark, there's one word that goes through the entire book of Mark that the theologians will know, the word euthas or immediately in Greek, meaning that the, the, the book of Mark is a book of agency. More than the teachings of Mark, Mark is more interested in the actions of Jesus rather than the teachings of Jesus. The book of Mark is the sermon in the shoes. Mark is trying to say to the Christian church, we might have the right theology, we have the right teachings, but if our teachings are not attended by action, therefore theology becomes useless. Hence one writer who, who, who comments on the book of Mark, 
he says to us that the book of Mark, rather than emphasizing religion, the book of Mark is emphasizing relationship. Many people, they want to be religious people. They can cram verses and know the spirit of prophecy. They can do good things. But if you do those things outside a relationship of the man Jesus, all our actions become useless. We are in the book of Mark chapter 2. Mark chapter 2 begins, interesting, says, And Jesus entered the city of Capernaum, and it was, it was heard that he, he was in the house, and all the crowd gathered in the house. If you, if you read this passage, uh, Dr. Kesey, it's in the original translation. The, the word, it was heard that he was in the house, does not capture the right spirit of the original language. The original language says, it gives the, the sense that says, it was rumored that he was in the house. The house was full, not because of effect of Jesus that was seen, but because of a rumor. Imagine, everyone is full in one house to see this man. They had a rumor that there is this healer in Galilee, that the blind they see, the lame they walk. They say, why can't we not bring our friend? Now, I want you to think of this. In that house where Jesus was, there were many groups of people. There were the Pharisees who were not there to see Jesus, but they were there to see a mistake and to criticize Jesus. They were, they were in, the, in the midst of the crowd, there was a group of people who were not there to do anything, but their work is to become spectators. And in the group, there were disciples who were known to be known disciples of Jesus. And there were other four guys who are the disciples, but their names are not mentioned. Now, this teaches us something, that when you come to church and worship, there's always a group that is not interested in Jesus, but they are there to come and, 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 and mark with a red pen and criticize. The Pharisees of our days are here. I remember when I was in Solusi, and someone has to preach, and all the theology students will come and sit up front with red pens, and we pray that as they sit up front, their turn for preaching comes, and when it comes, a person that is high in criticism, the sermon is good for nothing, and nothing is good for the sermon. Critics are there. Number two, there are people who are not ready to do anything in the church. Their work is to just become spectators. They are what we call in South Africa a parcel. When you go to a shop, you come back with a plastic, it's called a parcel. They are like cabbages. They, they just come and do nothing. They sit there, they, they watch other people and they go, they come back and sit and do nothing. And there is a group that is unmentioned. My interest today is these four guys. The Bible says the sermon Jesus is preaching. As Jesus is preaching, these guys are carrying their friends. They want to get to Jesus, but the entrance of the house was they could not get in because they were obstructed by the crowd. And the Bible says these guys opened the roof. Now they are taking a risk, they are breaking into someone's house. Because one writer suggests that that house could have been Peter's mother's in-law's house. They opened the roof. That's, the first crime is that they are breaking in into someone's house. The second mistake is that, that seems to be a mistake, is that they are disturbing the sermon that is being presented. And as now, imagine with me, for them to open the roof, they had to work together. For them to lift up their friends, their friend and, 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 and lay their friends in the presence of Jesus. They had to work together. Allow me to say to all of us as Christians, we can never make it in the Christian journey without having the spirit of working together. The Bible says these guys worked together and as they laid their friend through the roof, listen to what the Bible says. The Bible says the sermon of Jesus was disturbed. Jesus moved his attention not from the sermon, but to the men. But when you looked into what the Bible says, the Bible says Jesus did not see the faith of this man, but Jesus saw the faith of the friends. 
This man was not healed by his own faith, but he was healed by the faith of those who are carrying him. How many people are you praying for this morning? There are people in your families who do not know Jesus. There is someone in your family that is sick. But this passage is encouraging us to say some, someone can get to know Jesus because of your own prayer. The Bible says Jesus looked at that man and when he looked at that man he saw that above being paralyzed this man does not need only the physical healing but this man needs the spiritual healing. When he looked at him he said young man your sins are forgiven. Rabbi Kushner a, a Jewish theologian or a Jewish rabbi, when he looks into this passage, he says, when he writes, he says, when man fell into sin, sin happened in the sin happened in the spiritual order, but manifested in the physical order. Then he says, the sin that happened in the spiritual was manifested in the physical that it made this man to be paralyzed. Therefore, the forgiveness of sin of this man could be able to restore him back to the spiritual order that he was before he fell into sin. And Jesus says to this man, young man, your sins are forgiven thee. But that's not where the sermon is. This morning, the sermon is in these four guys. After 2,000 years of writing of scriptures, we read about these four men, but we don't know their names. They remain nameless. What do we learn? These days, we have a Christian that is seeking, Christianity that is always seeking for approval and for praise from people. We are an approval-driven society. When people don't approve what we say or they don't recognize and give us credit for what we do, we feel that we have not done anything. These guys did the best they could for their friends and they remained unknown. Even after thousands of years, we still read about them, but yet we know not their names. What do we learn from this? It is simple. There is nothing wrong to do something and remain unknown. Let me give you two examples, then I close. The first example that I will give you, in the Bible, in the New Testament, there is a man called Barnabas, Barnabas, the son of encouragement. You remember that Barnabas, when Paul was discouraged, when Paul decided to leave the ministry because of hate and, 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 and misunderstanding with Peter, who was a form of a leader of that church in the, in, in the day, Barnabas was the man that went and looked for Paul. Barnabas came with Paul. Today we are reading the three quarters of the New Testament written by who? By Paul. But behind Paul, there is an unfamous, the man who is not famous called Barnabas, who is always willing to remain the background character. Are you willing to be a blessing in someone's life and remain unknown? Give you the history of South Africa. There is a man that you read about in South Africa that we also talk about, a man called Nelson Mandela. How many of you have heard about Nelson Mandela? Nelson Mandela was an educated man. He was a lawyer by profession. But he was recruited to politics by a man called Walter Sisulu. Walter Sisulu was a mine worker, an educated man, who recruited an educated Mandela. And one man said to Mandela when he got into Johannesburg, if you spend much time with that unlearned man from the mines, you will spend a long time in prison. And it's true, indeed, he was in prison. But as history speaks about Mandela, and it tells you that Mandela spent 27 years in prison, Walter Sisulu spent 26 and a half years in prison, but no one talks about him. When they got out of prison, Mandela became a president, and Walter Sisulu always remained in the background character, but he was the man behind Mandela. Can you be a blessing behind someone and remain unknown? We are living in an age that says, after you have done something good for a person, don't see him talk like this. I made him to be who he is. I thank God even in these days, even today, I never had a sponsor to school. Every end of the semester, I will have to sit down and think, where will the money come from? 
but money came from different sources. And I thank God for that, because had I been taken to school by one person, that person will later say, he is who he is today because I've taken him to school. I want to challenge all of us that we can be a blessing into pe in people's lives and remain unknown and remain unfamous and so that that person gets all the glory. I want to say to you this morning, when you read about Mandela, do not forget the uneducated Walter Sisulu, a mine worker who never became a minister, by the way. When he came out from prison, his was to just stay behind Mandela. Without that man, we were never going to know about Mandela. What am I saying to you? You can forget everything. The four guys did the best and still remained unknown. I want to pray with someone this morning that says, Pastor, I've got a relative that is sick. I've got family that is I want to pray for. The word has encouraged us today that through our faith, things can be done in other people's lives. And even when those things are done, God can bless them. But Lord, teach me to remain in the background character. You know, we, we are living in these days, Pastor, where you get so surprised when you look at pastors, ministers. Let me talk to pastors who are starting to become theologians, you know, who are starting to become theologians before they become pastors. For now, they are theologians. I want to tell them and give them this advice. There are times when people preach, after they preach, when someone does not come to them and say, Pastor, you preached very well, they feel like they have never preached. Let us do the work of the Lord without expecting to be approved. Approval has what has killed our church, even the moral in the ministry. I want to challenge all of us that as we do the work of the Lord, let's allow the Lord to dethrone us so that he takes the center stage in our lives. And let us learn to give the glory where it is due, where it belongs, and the glory belongs to Jesus. If ever we forget something, let's not forget that we are nothing, and Christ is everything. If you have time, if you have prayer in your heart to lift up someone like those four guys who remain unknown, if you have a desire in your heart to lift someone in prayer, you'll stand up with me as I pray for you. Let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning for Jesus. We thank you for the time of prayer, for allowing us to come to your house this morning. We have learned a lot of these guys that we don't know. Their names are unknown to us, but their actions are recorded in history. We want to become such type of men that will be able to make people great and we remain unknown and we do not have a problem with that. You have always taught us where you taught us that we are the salt of the earth. What is encouraging about salt is that salt can be put in the food and people will not see it visible, but people can taste it. Can we be those people that can be so influential to an extent that even when we influence, we will not be seen and seek to take glory to ourselves. Teach us to be able to be servants, servants of your people. We pray, Lord, for our families as we are standing. We are lifting those who are sick in prayer, lifting those, Lord, who are having families that are struggling, you know that, Lord, the families in this world and in the church are under a severe attack by the devil. We pray in the name of Jesus this morning that may we all be kept and we pray that may they be preserved. Be with us, Lord, during this week of prayer. What we are asking for, we are asking, Lord, for a revival. We know there are your people who have not been baptized who are in the valley of decisions. As we are always praying, we are praying that the Lord will speak to them that by the end of this week of prayer, many will be baptized in, into Jesus or into his church. We prayed all this in the name of Jesus. Amen.
our most gracious, kind, loving Father, we thank you for calling us as a big family to serve you. Thank you for the word that has gone through, and thank you for us. Lord, we ask you to be with us as we leave this place to go to our places of work. Those who are going to class, Lord, lead them and guide them. Be with those who are studying too, and the teachers. And Lord, we also pray for the administration of this institution, that your will be done. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.